The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is America's favorite salad dressing because it tastes so good, so lively and teasing, and yet not a bit too sharp. Miracle Whip has a flavor that millions of folks call just exactly right. It's a delightfully different flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing. Enjoy it on your salads. Tomorrow, get a jar of the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, it's been snowing all afternoon in Summerfield, and the town is white from garden to rooftop. In the great Gildersleeve, he's plowing his way homeward through the frosty evening. Oops, watch it. Ice. Yeah. It's a pretty scene, the glow of lighted shop windows on the new fallen snow. But wait a minute. What are those shadowy little figures doing on that vacant lot? Oh, they're making snowballs. Uh-oh, they've spotted the water commissioner. Look out! Oh, who threw that? Oop, right in the... Hey, cut it out! Out! Zoop! You darn kids, down my neck. Run for Gildersleeve, head for Floyd's barbershop. You're right past my ear. You hoss, made it. Confounded kids. Well, look what blew in, the old snowman. Hi, Commish. Hello, Floyd. What happened? Them kids out there get the range on you? You darn little limps. They hit me with everything but their galoshes. Well, let's face it. You ain't a bad target. <laughs> uh, snow in my ears. Down my collar. Ah, they've been pasting everybody. I've had people running in here all afternoon. Floyd, why don't you do something about it? Why should I? It's the best day I've had since the day of the big rain. Uh, this darn snow. In my pockets. You yeah, those blasted kids. Floyd... I'll bet you two to one that Leroy's in that bunch. Well, I ain't going out there to look. Imagine. Leroy pegging snowballs at his own uncle. Why, George, that boy's getting out of hand. Turning into a juvenile delinquent. That's what he is. Oh, take it easy, Commish. Boys is boys. Yeah, I don't care if they are. Yeah, I've told Leroy never to throw snowballs at people. Furthermore, I gave him explicit orders to stay at home this afternoon and study. Yeah, I'll see you later, Floyd. Where are you going? Yeah, I'm going straight home. I'm going to be there when he comes in. There's one thing I won't put up with is disobedience. You better watch it going out the door. They can see you from the vacant lot. You're a sitting duck. Yeah, they don't know I'm coming out. Yeah, I'll take them by surprise. I'll be gone before they get... <laughs> Bullseye. What a right hand that kid's got. Well, I've got a right hand, too. When that boy gets home, I'm going to use it. I'll scorch his jeans. That you, Miss Gillespie? Yes, it's me, Bertie. Land alive, what happened? Did you get in a snow fight? Yeah, I was peppered from behind, ambushed. Kids nowadays have no respect for anybody. No, sir. <laughs> they sure let you have it, Mr. Gillespie. Well, Bertie, as soon as Leroy comes home, tell him I want to see him. Immediately. Leroy? Oh, he's home already. He's home already? Oh, he thought he'd pull a fast one. Probably took a shortcut. Thought he'd get here ahead of me, huh? Leroy? Yes, sir? Yes, sir? He knows I'm onto him. <laughs> Leroy, where are you? Stay there. I'm coming up. Then will be ready in about a half hour. Yeah, you won't have to set a place for Leroy, Bertie. I think he'll eat standing up. <laughs> yes, sir. Leroy? Good evening, Uncle Mort. Hey, Leroy, don't try to soft-soap me. 
I'm too smart for that. I can see you right through it. Where were you ten minutes ago? I was right here. Now, my boy, let's be honest. Take your punishment like a man. Punishment for what? You said I should come right home from school and study all afternoon. That's what I've been doing. You've been here all afternoon? Yes, sir. Bertie will tell you. You see, I've done my geography and my history, and I'm starting my arithmetic. Geography, history, Well, yeah, I guess I made a mistake. I thought you were out throwing snowballs with those kids in the vacant lot. Me? Oh, no, Uncle Mort. I do what you tell me to do. Yeah, sure you do. Yeah, I'm sorry, my boy. I just want to do what you want me to do. You're a fine boy. You're obedient and trustworthy. And your uncle is proud of you. Thank you, Uncle Mort. You bet. Your manners are improving, too. You're getting to be a real little gentleman. Thank you, sir. Leroy, you don't have to salute. <laughs> no, sir. Thank you, sir. May I return to my studies now? You, uh, you, huh? <laughs> you, sure. You go right ahead. You see you at dinner. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. You're right, George. The way that boy's going, I may not even put him in college. I think I'll send him straight to West Point. <laughs> oh, hello, Marjorie. Coming right down, my dear. Well, you look pleased about something, Unky. Yeah, little Leroy. He's more like his uncle every day. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, where's Bronco? Oh, he should be here. He said he'd be home at... Where's the mantel clock? The clock? Oh, it stopped running yesterday. I guess Bronco took it out to be fixed. Oh, easy chair. You... You fine little family. Dinner cooking in the kitchen. Your life is good. Yes, indeed. Well, here's Bronco. Hello, folks. Hi, Marge, honey. Hello, darling. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Bronco. Tonight, I return home bearing gifts. Oh, what are they? Let's see. Yeah, open this one first. Ooh, say, fancy package. Oh, it's a bed jacket. It's beautiful. Yeah, I sent away for it by mail. It cleared a Hess Brothers in Allentown. <laughs> Real satin. Nice. I saw Dr. Maester today, Marge. He says next week we're going to be proud parents. Next week? That's right, Unky. I felt kind of silly today. I went to Peavy's and ordered the cigars. And Mr. Gildersleeve, do you think three boxes will be enough? Three boxes? We'll have smog all winter. <laughs> What's in the other package? Oh, here. I have a book. It's the very newest thing on bringing up children, the modern way. By a child psychologist, uh, Dr. H.L. Yeagley. Yeah, look at that title. Yeah, it is a title. Oh, out of the rompers and into the teens. Oh, this is wonderful, Bronco. It'll tell us exactly what to do with the baby. Oh, sure. This is the latest thing. All the new ideas. Uh, look here on page three. It says, uh, uh, your child will have a mind of his own. Let him use it. That's so true. <laughs> yes, but... Go on, Bronco. Doesn't he read beautifully, Anki? <laughs> he also says here, uh, beware of the perfect child. Danger lies ahead. You yes, yes. Be a parent, not a policeman. The child who obeys without question is building within him serious frustrations. Yeah, I know, but... Welcome the eager, inquisitive child, the searching mind the stubborn spirit. Pity the child without will or imagination. A sad little machine grinding out good behavior to feed the ignorant ego of some overbearing mother or father, well, aunt or uncle. Yuncle! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Isn't that great, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, that fellow Yeagley knows about children. Yes, he certainly does. Yeah, I suppose he has a big family. No, he's a bachelor. <laughs> If he was married, he wouldn't have time to learn all these things. Yeah, that follows, I guess. 
Well, at least we don't have to worry about Leroy, Unky. There's nothing perfect about him. Well, hey, we got to get going, Marge. Uh, we're having dinner with my folks tonight. Well, I'm already. Grab my coat. Goodbye, Unky. Yeah, bye. Goodbye, children. Goodbye. Hey, I wonder where Bronco got this book. It is ridiculous stuff. Beware of the perfect child. Danger lies ahead. The author probably just made that up. Who was it? Oh, yes. Dr. H.L. Yagley. Hmm? He's got an awful lot of letters after his name. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. As Marjorie said, Leroy isn't perfect. Not by a long shot. Dinner time table, Miss Gilsley. Yeah, I'm coming, Bertie. Simply because the boy stayed in the house and studied one afternoon doesn't make him perfect. Maybe his feet hurt. Leroy, come to dinner and wash your hands. Sure I am, Uncle. All washed. Now, that's what I call a real good boy. <laughs> You're over. Leroy, you didn't have to come rushing downstairs just because I called you. Unc, when you call, I jump. Shall we be seated? You, you, what are you doing behind my chair? I'm holding it for you. Yeah, thank you. Sit down, my boy. Thank you. Are you going to sit straight in your chair? Yes, sir. Why don't you sit like you usually do, on one corner? I sit straight at the table. That's what you tell me to do. Well, all right. But relax. I'm not a policeman. I'm a parent. I'm relaxed. Soup coming on. It looks very good, Bertie. Thank you, Leroy. Isn't he a fine boy, Mr. Gilsleeve? Oh, yes. May I serve you the crackers, Uncle Mort? <laughs> Leroy, you don't have to say, may I serve you the crackers? Do like you always do. Yell catch. <laughs> you always said I shouldn't do that. Well, that doesn't mean you can't. I'm not king around here. You are to me. Mm, no, I'm not. I'm just a plain uncle. Just because I tell you to do something doesn't mean you have to do it. Yes, it does. Who said so? You did. Why do you have to pay any attention to me? Where's your stubborn spirit? I don't have a stubborn spirit. Yes, you do. Now you use it. If you don't stop doing everything I tell you to do, you're going to be punished. Yes, sir. And don't say yes, sir. No, sir. And don't say no, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Today being Valentine's Day, you've probably surprised your loved ones with a little present or maybe fixed them their favorite food for dinner, something that's extra good. But then, why not do that every day? Give them extra good salads, the kind you're sure to have when you make them with Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is a delicious salad dressing with a lively, teasing flavor, a peppy flavor that's not too mild and yet not a bit too sharp. It's a flavor that millions of folks everywhere call just exactly right. And it's a distinctive flavor because Miracle Whip is actually a different kind of salad dressing. That's right. Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe, one that combines the qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise to give you the best of both. And Miracle Whip is blended a special craft way, so it's smooth as smooth can be. It's no wonder Miracle Whip is America's favorite salad dressing. No wonder it outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Treat your family to salads often. And whether they're luscious fruit salads, crisp vegetable combinations, or shimmering gelatin molds, make them extra good with the salad dressing millions prefer. Smooth, delicious Miracle Whip. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. It seems our water commissioner is having a little difficulty with his nephew, Leroy. Is Leroy misbehaving? No, it's just the opposite. He's being too good. It's after dinner now, and the great man is in his study. Well, why did Bronco have to bring this darn book home in the first place? Causing nothing but trouble. Okay. Here's the front door, Bertie. Yes, sir. Good evening, Bertie. 
If Summerfield's water can make nerd home this evening, right there, Mr. Study. Thank you, Bertie. Judge, I'm good to see you, Mr. Gilsey. Oh, yes. Thanks, Bertie. Well, good evening, Gilda. Hello, Judge. Pull up a chair and sit down. Staying at home this evening, I see. Yes, I have a lot of things on my mind. To use the vernacular of the sea, Gildy, I thought you would put your old hulk in dry dock for repairs. You, what's this? After your great running battle with the boys in the vacant lot, Floyd told me about the snow shoveling and the snowballing that they gave you. Uh, Gabby Barber. I understand that you barely made it into port. He said that they shot away your mizzen and forehatch and you came in listening to starboard. <laughs> you, Judge, stop prattling. I haven't time for your chit-chat. By the way, what time is it, Gildy? I notice the clock on the mantel is missing. Yeah, everything's topsy-turvy in this house tonight. Judge, I'm worried about Leroy. Oh? Was he one of the boys at the vacant lot? No, but I wish he had been. There's a terrible change come over the boy, Judge. All of a sudden, he's doing everything I ever told him to do. What's this, Gildy? For no reason whatsoever. He's turned into a perfect boy. Model child. Well, isn't that fine? Fine? It's awful. The boy has no spirit. No will of his own. Here, look. Here. Here, right here in this book. Modern child raising. It says, beware of the perfect child. Danger lies ahead. Where does it say that? I don't see it. You're right there, Judge. You're right there. Oh, yes. Yeah. And look here. The child who obeys without question is building within him serious frustrations. Yeah, at the rate Leroy is going, he's going to have frustrations coming out of his ears. Oh, poppycock, Gilda. Poppycock, nothing. You wouldn't recognize Leroy, Judge. He's going around acting like little Lord Fauntleroy on Christmas Eve. I can't believe it. Good evening, Judge. Oh, good evening, Leroy. If you'll excuse this interruption, Uncle Mort... I'm writing thank you letters for my birthday presents. Do you spell superb with a single or a double B? You, brother. S-U-P-E-R-B, Leroy. Thank you, Judge. What a perfect little gentleman. You don't say that, Judge. Leroy, I have a keen idea. Bertie's down in the basement. Why don't you sneak out in the kitchen and grab something out of the ice box? You don't want me to do that. You will do it anyway. You want to become a sad little machine grinding out good behavior? You told me not to eat between meals. Leroy, stop doing what I tell you. Use your imagination. Where's your willpower? Gildy, Leroy is right. You must not criticize him for obedience. He's building character. Yeah, a lot you know about it, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Uncle Mort. I'll return to my room now. Cheerio. <laughs> Here you go. It's all my fault. I've been an overbearing uncle. I've crushed the boy's spirit. He doesn't dare call his soul his own. Well, if you ask me, Gildy, I'd say you're extremely fortunate. Well, nobody asked you, Horace. Well, I was a boy once myself, and I was a model child. Yeah, and look what happened, an old goat. <laughs> Gildy? Say, maybe the boy's not feeling well. Yeah, that could be it. Right, George, I'll run down to Peavy's. He'll recognize the symptoms. What symptoms? The symptoms of perfectionitis. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gellersley. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? Well, I want to talk to you, Peavy. I've got a real puzzle. You don't say. What is it? The kind with two bent nails? <laughs> no, Phoebe. It's Leroy. I can't figure out what's happened to the boy. He's changed completely. Which way? Well, he's become practically angelic. He's got a halo around his head. This is Leroy you're talking about? He isn't the same boy. He won't disobey. Does everything I tell him to do. He won't do anything wrong. Yeah, I'm worried. Could he be sick? He doesn't sound very sick to me. How do you feel? <laughs> yeah, blame it on me, Peavy. I guess I'm the one who did it. All these years, making the boy behave, filling him full of frustration, breaking his spirit. Oop. Customer. No, it's Leroy. Good evening, Leroy. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Hi, Unc. Yeah, Leroy. 
Out running around, way past your bedtime. It is past your bedtime, isn't it? I don't know. Can I have some bubble gum on, can I? You bubble gum? Sure. I don't want any. Hey, this floor is slippery. Watch me slide. Skid you Leroy, watch it. Is this the little angel you were talking about? Why, George Peavy, he's coming out of it. Are you sure he was ever in it? Hey, Al, can I have a Coke? Can I have a Coke, Mr. Peavy? In a bottle, not in a glass, in a bottle. Oh, for pity's sake, give me a chance. Oh, little Leroy, his old happy self again. All right, there's your bottle. Thanks. Yeah, I'll pay for it, Peavy, with pleasure. Just put it on my bill. Very well. Hey, look what happens when I shake the bottle. Leroy. Machine gun! <laughs> you know, watch out for the magazine. Yeah, you me, coming down the street. I'm not a charge. See you later, Al. What were you saying a minute ago, Mr. Gillespie? <laughs> well, he's back to normal again. I can't figure it out. He may have been heading for normal, but I think he went past it without stopping. (laughs) Well, you don't know what a relief this is, Petey, to see him acting up again. His eager, inquisitive little mind back at work. Isn't it great to see him just the way he used to be? No, no, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, well, I feel better. See you later, Petey. Mr. Gilsey? Yeah. Where's Leroy? Did he come home? Yes, sir. He's home all right. <laughs> that boy, he's been galloping around this house, cutting up didos. What's got into him, Mr. Gilsey? Well, it just shows he's a normal, healthy boy, Bertie. Full of spirit. Hey, Bronco, watch this! Hey, take it easy. Yeah, listen to that, Bertie. No frustrations in that boy. <laughs> now there's no room on this house. <laughs> you over. Leroy, what happened? My head on the end table and the leg busted. Cheap wood. Uh, Leroy's getting out of hand. Hands, man, so I made a little mistake. Who's perfect? Yeah, Leroy's right, Marjorie. That's the way a boy learns, by making a few mistakes. Well, he's getting a fine education tonight. No, Bronco. Remember the book. Remember what it says. Leroy has an active, eager little mind. Yeah. yeah we'll just pick up the pieces of the table, and Leroy will know better than to do it next time. Won't you, my boy? Yeah. Next time, I'll do it on the dining room table. (laughs) You better run to bed now, Leroy. You've had a busy day. I don't want to go to bed. Let's wrestle. It's after 10 o'clock, Unky. Mr. Gildersleeve, what happened to the clock that was on the mantel? I thought you took it out to be fixed. Not me. Let's get something on the radio. Maybe the falcon is on. No, Leroy. It's bedtime. Everybody has to go to bed. Are you going to bed? Well, not right away. Let's wrestle. Yeah, but Leroy... Oh, I think we'll turn in. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good night, Uncle. Good night, kiddies. Now, you see, Leroy? It's pretty late. Everybody's turning in, and you're tired. Let's wrestle. Hey. <laughs> Leroy, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just suggesting... Let's wrestle. Yeah, I'm not going to wrestle. Want to throw the football? No. Basketball? No. It's time for you to go to bed. I don't want to go to bed. Leroy, what's the matter with you? I got a stubborn spirit. Well, so I. You get up there to bed right now. But, Unc. Leroy. Yeah, but... Leroy, Forster, you get up those stairs or I'm going to get the ruler. Okay, Unc. God. You're right. Confounded book anyway. Got to find that thing and throw it right in the ash can. Out of the rompers and into the teens. Who? Follow that thing and the child will go out of his rompers and into jail. Everything all right, Miss Gilsley? Yeah, I guess so, Bertie. It got quiet in here all of a sudden. Leroy go to bed? Yeah, I finally had to chase him upstairs. Don't be angry with him, Mr. Gilsley. He's just a little boy. Yeah, he can be pretty exasperating sometimes. But he don't mean it. No, I suppose not. Uh, by the way, Miss Gilsley, what happened to the mantel clock? Well, didn't you send it out to be fixed? Not me. Who did? I don't know. Yeah, probably has something to do with this silly book. It's even got the clocks all mixed up. Yes, sir. Well, we'll find it in the morning. Yeah, sure. Good night, Miss Gilsey. Good night, Bertie. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I was a little hard on Leroy. I didn't do anything. Yeah, I guess I sounded pretty mean, though. And he is just a little fellow. Trying to do his best. Yeah, what the heck. Probably better go up and say good night to him. Hmm? 11 o'clock. 
You wonder if he's asleep? Leroy? What do you want, Unc? Are you asleep? Nope. Leroy? Yeah, Unc? I guess I lost my temper a little. Sorry. I was just trying to do what you wanted me to do. What do you mean? I found that psychology book you were reading about kids. Oh, so that explains it. Well, we're going to forget that book, both of us. We'll be just the way we are. Okay. Leroy. Yeah? Why was it so important to please your old uncle? You know the mantel clock? Yes. I tried to fix it. You? How'd you come out? It's under my bed. Oh, so that was it. Say, it's running again. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You're right, George. You did fix it. I did? You what a fine boy. Well, 13, 14, Leroy! The Great Gildersleeve will be right back with an important announcement about next week's program. For you who like to serve salads but don't have time to fuss with fancy recipes, here's an idea that's simple and simply delicious. On each individual salad plate, place a slice of canned pineapple. Surround the pineapple with watercress and three or four ripe olives and top the pineapple with delicious Miracle Whip salad dressing. Mmm, Miracle Whip makes even the simplest salad taste special because Miracle Whip has such a delightful flavor. So lively and teasing, and yet not a bit too sharp. And it's a distinctive flavor, too. Try it, won't you? Enjoy the salad dressing millions prefer. The one and only Miracle Whip. Before we say goodnight, I want to remind you all that we're looking forward to a blessed event next week. Marjorie's baby. What will it be? A boy? Or a girl? What do you think? I don't know if I can wait until next week to find out myself. But don't worry about Marjorie. She's fine. I don't know about Bronco, though. Hope he can hold up. I'll see you next week. Yes, I am. Well, 15. Time to say goodnight, folks. Greg Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. What's the difference between a sandwich that's really super and one that's merely good? Well, here's the answer. Kraft's prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard to cold meats or cheese, you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. With either kind, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Don't miss the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your paper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the superfluous murder.
Here comes the one, the only, 